We are making steel now, which is fantastic, but the only issue is that it's quite slow to produce. But depending on how well things go today, then hopefully we'll be able to speed that process up greatly and maybe even start automating things. So while we wait on some more steel being made for us, we are going to look into our quest log and look into how to improve the blast furnace into an improved blast furnace. And in order to make the improved blast furnace, we will require some reinforced blast bricks, which are blast bricks alongside some steel plates. We will require 27 steel plates in total, and seeing as we only have 17 steel at the moment, then we will need to wait a little bit. But with that steel, we can come over to our mechanical presser and just allow it to start turning that into some plates for us. As we wait on both of those processes finishing, we will look into the next part, which is to create some blast furnace preheaters. And these preheaters are blocks that we can attach to our blast furnace to greatly increase the smelting speed of it. And in order to make it, we will require some iron sheet metal alongside an induction heater. The iron sheet metal is simple enough, just requiring four metal plates. The induction heater is a bit more complicated, requiring iron ingots, copper ingots, redstone dust, and a copper coil block. With the copper coil block being created using 8 LV wire coils alongside an iron ingot and the LV wire coils being created using copper wire alongside a stick with the copper wires then being created using engineer's wire cutters alongside copper plates and we are going to require a lot of LV wire so let's take out a few copper ingots then and then also start getting that pressed down into some plates. We now have our copper plates and our wire cutters, so let's start making a few copper wires and then turning the wires into our LV wire coils. With the low voltage wire coils now, we can finally make the copper coil block and then with it, we can make the induction heater. And we'll quickly make up a few iron sheet metals to then finally make our blast furnace preheaters. So that is everything that we now need in order to upgrade our blast furnace here. So I will stop all processes within it, then just simply get rid of the blast furnace, revealing a pretty big room just behind where we will set up the new improved blast furnace, which will require us turning the blast bricks and steel plates into some reinforced blast bricks, then creating another 3x3 three three block with the reinforced blast bricks, but this time with a hopper just on top of it, and with our engineer's hammer we can then turn this into the improved blast furnace. With our preheaters just going side by side into those vents there, and we will turn that so they do face into them. I've seen that our coke oven is now full of creosote oil, so we will need to start getting buckets of it out so that it can keep making us some coal coke. And with the bucket of creosote oil, we can then turn planks into treated wood planks, which we will need a few of these for the next part. In order for us to get the improved blast furnace smelting ores a bit faster, we will need to get some power into the preheaters, which we can do by supplying some power to it through the use of some wire coils, relays and wire connectors. With the low voltage wire connectors being made using copper ingots alongside terracotta and the wire relays being pretty much just the same recipe. As for the power source itself, we can either make a kinetic dynamo with a water wheel attached to it or probably what I'm going to do is make a thermoelectric generator. With the thermoelectric generator being created using steel ingots, a copper coil block and some constantan plates. The constantan plates are made by pressing down a bar of it, with the ingots themselves being created using copper alongside nickel. So we are definitely going to require a lot of copper today, which does mean a lot of sifting through some gravel for it. But with any luck, we can maybe also start automating this process today, now that we can make some steel. 
But here's some copper and some nickel then, so we'll smelt those down into some molten constantan. This mechanical press is certainly going to be busy today, but that is then everything that we require in order to make the thermoelectric generator. And the way this works is fairly simple, so if I just make a little hole here, and then place the generator into the middle of it. I will need a hot and a cold source block on either side of the generator, and it's the temperature difference which produces the power within the generator, which then allows us to get some power out from it. Ideally, I would like to use a hot source such as lava, and a cold source such as a block of ice, but I'm not quite sure how to get ice yet, so I think water will just need to do for the cold source. We have a table here of different blocks with different temperatures and I've seen that uranium blocks seem to give us quite a lot of Kelvin out. And we do have uranium as a block which we will then take out as our hot source. And we have our water as the cold source. So I believe that is this setup nearly complete. We will just need a wire connector on top for us to actually get the power out from it. And they are simple enough to create, so let's grab some of them, as well as some relays. I will also make a low voltage capacitor to act as a battery for this, which requires iron ingots, copper ingots, lead ingots, redstone dust, and our treated wood planks. So that's nice and simple to make. I'm not entirely sure how much power this generator actually generates with these blocks beside them, but we can maybe make a guesstimate using the capacitor here, although I will very quickly make that side an input, then get a wire connector onto it with another wire connector on top of the generator. And with our low voltage wire, if I now connect to there, to there, we can start to see that the capacitor slowly starts filling up with some power and I'm not entirely sure how quickly this capacitor is filling up here. It seems to be filling up between 0.1 and 0.3 kiloflux, so I'm very quickly just going to sever the connection at the moment. Then I am going to place down some more power for this, another hot and cold source, which should in theory then have the generator create more power for us, but we will see. And I do think that the capacitor is now filling up a lot faster. So now we need to get some power into the preheaters here, which we will do, kind of similar to how we managed to get the capacitor filling up. But before we connect them up, I will create a wooden post, which requires treated wood fences and some stone bricks. And those are all simple enough to make, so there's a few wooden posts for us. I will set the wooden post down there for the moment, and with our engineer's hammer, we will get out this little bit there. Then I can connect our relay onto that, and if I place a wire connector on top of the preheater, I should now be able to connect the relay up to both of them here, and this should power them both on. Yes, I can already see power going into it. So if I now put some coal coke as a fuel source into this, alongside our iron ingots, this should start to smelt down those iron ingots into our steel ingots at a much faster rate, thanks to both of the preheaters being on. Which that certainly seems to be the case here. Perfect. So there's one part of the problem now solved. Now on to the next problem, which is generating some more power. Seeing as both of the preheaters here are definitely draining the power by quite a bit. But nothing that some more power won't solve. Although, whenever we are starting to deal with a lot more power generators producing a lot more voltage here, I think it's maybe about time that we make ourselves a Faraday suit, which all the parts for it can be created simply using some aluminium plates. Sorted. Well, the setup here will certainly be enough to generate the power required for the improved blast furnace there, but whenever we start making these other machines, we will definitely require a lot more power sources. 
which we will get there with this, but for now I am happy just with the improved blast furnace giving us some better steel, and in fact because we now can produce steel we can better automate this itself because with the steel we can now make ourselves an auto compressed hammer which will basically do the job of turning our compressed cobblestone into gravel and then into other materials but was requiring steel ingots in order for us to make it. We now have all of that covered so all we will need is a compressed diamond hammer which is expensive to make but will definitely be worth it. So there is a compressed diamond hammer for us and there is our auto compressed hammer. And while we're at it we will also create an auto heavy sieve which will require steel blocks, glass panes and a heavy sieve. And all of that is simple enough so there is our auto heavy sieve. In addition to the auto machines I will also create some basic logistical transporters which are simple enough to make using two steel ingots and a network cable. So that's a few of those then for us. And basically this will allow me to connect the machines together to allow items to pass through to each other. But in order to tell them when to send items through, I will need to make myself a configurator, which is simple enough using lapis, an emerald and a stick. We start off with a cobble generator tier 5 and then above that we will put in some compacting drawers which will take out the cobblestone and compact it for us. We will then place our auto compressed hammer just to the side and connect that up. And with the configurator I will then tell this to start pushing items so that will then start pushing the cobblestone into the hammer. The hammer will require some power in order for it to operate but it will also require one of these compressed diamond hammers. But then once it has turned the cobblestone into some gravel for us I will then have it feed through into another compacting drawer which will give us out some compacted gravel from it which will then feed through into our auto sieve and from the auto sieve we will then have all of the goodies from it just feed down into this chest here. Okay so let's get some power then into the two machines here and this one will require an emerald mesh in order to operate. Then let's get it all hooked up to the main relay there. Perfect and hopefully things will start working. We are getting some power into this but not a lot but enough at least so that we can start getting some gravel out and that gravel is then flowing through into the compacting drawers there and then from the compacting drawers into the heavy sieve and we are starting to get a lot of goodies then drop down into the chest. Excellent, the principle works. Now for the more complex part which will require taking iron ore out from that, smelting it into iron ingots and I'm feeding our improved blast furnace with it. And I think I have a potential solution for that which will use a logical sorter and that is fairly simple to make. Alongside a small electric furnace which will require iron plates, an LV wire connector, a furnace and some conveyor belts. With the conveyor belts being simple enough to make using three pieces of leather, two iron ingots and redstone dust. So there's some of those items then made for us. Now if I come into the chest and take out some iron ore pieces, then take our logical sorter and put that there. I should then be able to set a new filter within the sorter, give it a new item stack for only iron ore pieces, that looks fine. Then we will have another cable come out feeding into some compacting drawers, so that should then start making us some iron ore chunks, which we can test here actually by putting our iron ore pieces back in and already that's gone into those drawers, perfect. So if I now grab out an iron ore chunk, we will basically just do the same here, except this time it will only filter the iron ore chunks. And we will then have them filtered out and come into the small electric furnace here, which I've already seen that has happened. And if I get a wire on top of that and our cable out, then connect that up to our main power line. 
I think this should start working. Wedge it has, and it is already melting our iron ore chunks into some iron ingots for us, which I will take out from the small electric furnace and see if we can feed it into the improved blast furnace. That's looking good so far. Let's set this to then start pulling some items out of it. Good, that's the iron ingots now starting to come up and we'll eventually go into the improved furnace here and I can already see them starting to fill that up. So that is now our iron process automated for us. We will need to now get the fuel sorted, which I should be able to do by connecting the coke oven up into the blast furnace as well there. That looks all right to me so far. I could automate the fueling of the coke oven here as well actually, because we do get some coal out from this as well. So if I set a new filter then just for coal and we will need to colour these so coal will go blue and iron green, why not? Then if I get our transporters and start feeding them down towards the oven I can also see some coal coke just move over there at the moment and has been fed into the blast furnace. Perfect, so that at least works. Alright then, a bit messy, but I think it will work. Now just to colour this in blue. And I may need to reconsider the placement of the compacting drawers here. I'm not sure if the logistical transporter will accept this or not. But let's get some coal put into the system then. And it is now starting to ship down towards the coal coke oven. Perfect, so that's the coke oven here now being sorted and will give us out our coal coke. We will worry about the creosote oil at another point, but if I get a drawer there, that will now give us all of the steel ingots out from this blast furnace. I will need to reposition things here so that we can start storing the slag that is also a byproduct from it. I will clean this up at another point. But for now, let's get it all back and connected up. And I believe that we have now fully automated our improved blast furnace to produce us a lot of steel. We just need to wait on getting some more iron nuggets in, but that's no issue at all. And in fact, what we could do is we could filter all of the other ores there into some other compacting drawers similar to how we have the main storage set up actually. And there is another little iron ingot heading straight into the furnace. Perfect, the system works. Well, I'm pretty satisfied. We now have our steel production pretty much automated. Still a bit of tidying up to do here, but I'll do that in the off time.